Okay, so thank you, Holly, for that great presentation. And I love the five R's. <laughs> Never heard of that. I'm Sandra Cuban, and today I'm presenting my core Fulbright Scholar Project. You'll see my views do not represent the current administration in the U.S., which has espoused xenophobic immigration policies. I could go on about that. Um, so having said that, I just want to make clear that my project is not about building fortresses, but about understanding migration, especially for women in a very different context, Chile. I apologize for not being able to present this in Spanish, but it's not at a level I feel confident. Uh, last, I want to thank all of the people that helped to bring me here and for whom I'm indebted. First, Maria Gahan and Hillary Price of CIES in the States, Antonio Campagna and Mason Taylor of the Fulbright Commission here, my colleagues Lindsay Carte and Hugo Zanino, who are professors at UFRO, and invited me to work with them at their migration center in Temuco. And finally, a big thanks to my colleague and friend, Romina Romera Hermosa, who will be working with me on this project. Thank you all so much. So my specialization is on women immigrants and their trajectories and opportunity structures, their aspirations for themselves and their families, their adaptations to new places of settlement, <coughs> and their transnational lives and networks. Ultimately, since I've collected data on women immigrants in England and the U.S. before, I'm hoping to form a larger picture of the issues that women immigrants across the world have to contend with. I'm a professor and director in health and community studies at Western Washington in Washington State, and here we have a focus on action research and social justice that is part of helping communities solve the problems. And in my two most recent books, I've examined both high-skilled and low-skilled women immigrants and their transnational care and communication with their families and in their workplaces. And these are de-skilling migrant women in the global care industry. And in my most recent book, coming out in September, it's a shameless promotion, um, in transnational family communication, immigrants and ICTs, both Palgrave Macmillan. I hope to someday write a book about the study that I'll conduct here in Chile. I also recently finished a documentary on a Mexican woman living and working in Seattle and her struggles to adapt. She was an engineer in Mexico and became a maid in the US and was unaware of the conditions of her employment and the lack of support she received. So this project focuses on the nexus of mobilities, gender, and migrancy in Latin America with Chile as a critical case study. I'll focus on immigrant women's mobilities and their immobilities in Temuco, and I'll use mobile methods so as to be, as to be moved by and with my subjects. So I draw on mobility's theory to understand the ways immigrant women perceive their situations as they migrate to Chile and move in and around Temuco, and any forms of stasis or paralysis that they experience as well. For example, feeling stuck in places. It is their mobile subjectivities that I'll focus on in terms of their identities, actions, and feelings as they adapt to new places, but also negotiate transnational lives with their families back home and enact migration chains, that is, bringing their family and friends. This will be a small-scale project over a four-month period. Uh, the project employs a cycle of reflective inquiry, action, and dialogue about the phenomenon, and involves two strands <coughs> consisting of research and teaching, which I'll talk about. So Chile is a critical case study. Historically known as an immigrant sending country, Chile has become a new destination country for South American and Caribbean immigrants in particular from Colombia, Peru, Argentina, Bolivia, and the Dominican Republic. Chile's demographic changes are due to its relative political stability, economic development, immigration and refugee initiatives, and socially progressive policies, especially after what Mason announced. Um, 
and more so than other places in terms of its high performance in the Millennium Development Goals. I'm also looking at um, a possible new phenomenon of southern driven migration from Mexico post U.S. elections. Most of these new immigrants are women who represent the global mass movement of women otherwise known as the feminization of migration. Although a majority of them enter Chile's gateway capital, Santiago, here, they also arrive to smaller entryways like Temuco in the Araucanía region with its burgeoning tourist industry that pulls them there. This trend is similar to new places of settlement around the world that are quietly increasing their immigrant populations. Many of these immigrant women arrive to Temuco with the expectation that they'll be integrated into its society and labor market, yet their motivations as well as barriers to their lives have been little noted. Furthermore, there's a perception that all immigrant women have the same trajectories and opportunities. Generally, research practices and immigration policies have been piecemeal, and immigration um, and exclusive of gender, race, and social class, as well as other issues affecting the population. So while official policies have been open, culturally, there is a stigma to immigrant acculturation, and the regularization of their status is not without challenges. So these are my research questions. What are the mobilities, physical, social, and cultural, and migratory of immigrant women in Temuco? What are their experiences, perspectives, strategies, and motivations as they socioeconomically, politically, culturally, and psychologically adapt to this new place of settlement? What are their supports and barriers? What strategies do they use to empower themselves and their families and communities, both within and beyond Chile? And in what ways do immigrant women draw on their transnational identities, that is, between countries and cultures, to promote their what's called migrant capital, meaning the resources that they have in their networks that are indicative of gender, ethnicity, and class? So these research questions will be investigated through interviews with women immigrants that are structured as narratives. Um, with accounts of their mobilities. The participants will also volunteer artifacts, precious <laughs> objects that they brought with them from their home countries and discuss them as well. And using these visuals can sometimes add to the richness of their words. Um, and then I'll create an action research project with a select group of participants from a women's organization using multimedia formats like digital stories to produce stories of their mobilities. I'll also be teaching seminars at UFRO and working with faculty and doctoral students there. The seminars aim to produce dialogues about research and theoretical perspectives as well as policies surrounding migration, gender, and mobilities at local, regional, national, and international levels. The overarching question guiding the seminars will be in what ways can research and theory frame the mobilities of immigrant women? And the four seminars will focus on skill levels, research methodology, neoliberal policies on immigration and education, and about digital stories. And I will be working with the women's organization, trying to set the, that up right now, and engage participants in an educational and community project so that women immigrants' voices and stories are heard. Using an object, for example, that they brought from their home countries, they'll tell stories about its meanings, they'll place themselves and these objects in public or private spaces that make claims on this as their territory. It might be a corner of a street, it might be a park, a hallway, or a room in a public building or stores, so that, that a place that they want to enter and feel challenged to enter it currently. Um, we'll make digital uh, stories or photo historias about it using their words, images, and sound, and I'll create a report on the importance of this project for policymakers if they think that, with stories that link the informants, that is the women immigrants, and their needs and interests to the policies so that they might better be served. Okay, outcomes. Winding up, 
to build knowledge of an invisible population, these women immigrants in a new place of settlement in and around Temuco, um, to empower immigrant women through telling and documenting their stories, linking research with policies through these stories, building research capacity by transferring knowledge through academic seminars, and developing new community partners through these organizations, and contributing, finally, to internationalization efforts at my own university and in Washington through, through this wonderful Fulbright um, Award opportunity. So thank you for your time and for listening. And again, thank you to Mason and Antonio for inviting me here today. Thank you. I have a question. I'm dying to know because we, well, I, I teach intercultural communication, yes. and we live in Arizona. And our experience, and I correct me, Leon, if I'm wrong, but I think historically, in the border states, the the migration, the emigration um, uh, demographic has been men, and there are so many villages in Mexico where the, the men of working age are gone. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in, in how you arrived at this as a, you know, an area of interest. Yeah, so this, um, in communicating with the uh, academics at UFRO the, and in looking at articles and statistics, there is, um, there is a majority of women in this particular area, which is probably related to the service sector, which is you know, especially the tourism industry. Is it close to the border? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Tumuco, yeah. Tumuco's in the south. It's the center south. Center south, yeah. Yeah, I would say <coughs> that. But it might be considered just the south. So the, you it's, know. It's south of Santiago, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so. Several hours. Yeah. yeah, you could probably speak to that better than myself. But this whole phenomenon of um, whether men or women are coming in to various states um, in the U.S. or from particular countries, there's a phenomenon called gender selectivity. So um, uh, the Philippines, for example, is a large exporting country as well as Kerala, India, of um, women, particularly in nursing. And you'll see that um, in um, some Caribbean countries with women teachers. Um, and so there, there's a whole phenomenon with particular countries um, and structured immigration systems coming in which produce gendered um, flows. Oh, that's yeah. Good. yeah. Thank you. good point. Thank you. My English is very bad. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you know that in Temuco, in mm. the Araucanía area, mm. we have a problem about terrorism? Did you mm. know? I didn't. Yes, but we uh -huh. have. But uh -huh. the go uh, uh, during the last ten years, mm -hmm. but the government mm -hmm. said no. But now, um, the, the last uh, week, they said. We have a problem with terrorism there, and the woman is going out of the area. The woman and, mo and many families, because the um, terrorist is burning, commando, burning, burning the farmers and and, men, um, and the people uh, have a few few works. Uh, or less works than before. Mm. It's a beautiful area with many volcanoes and tourists, but we have a very big problem with terrorists there. Mm. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, and are, is this connected to immigrants? Because as we know, terrorism can be no, no, na natal. No, the, mm. the, the people, the, the woman is mm. going out from the Muco or mm. Araucania mm -hmm. because they have a, a terrorist uh, there. Mm. Uh, Araucania. No, they are they are they immigrants? No, it's no, the, no, the no, no. There it is. It's the Spanish people? immigrants who first came to Araucania. <laughs> right. And so uh, the, the, the Mapuches are Mapuches. trying to recover their land. So there's, there's but a it's large not really well 
there is an issue whether this is terrorism or not. Yes. And um, it's very political anyway. I so think happens. it's complex. Yeah, um, but you have to study about this because you can see another reality uh, that you say. You, you, you have right, but there are more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank so you. it might affect the population in an interesting way, uh, the population you're mm -hmm. studying. Yeah. Sure. Same question. Yeah. Is there a way to access the, uh, your documentary you made? Uh, yes. It's, we're actually submitting it to um, film festivals now. So apparently the rule is you're not supposed to publicly show it during this period. Mm -hmm. But I will be happy to show you the website. Mm -hmm. And um, we're in the process of creating a trailer for it. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you. Thank you for asking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I have a follow-up question on that. Will mm -hmm. you be um, like actively publishing any kind of like um, updates of your research while you're, while you're researching? Is there um, access to that? Um, if we're interested in of seeing what you're doing, thank you. Yes, um, I'm. I'm. I'm going to be doing reports. However, um, I'm thinking about also doing a blog. Really? <laughs> I'm. I'm glad you're so excited. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Definitely, as students um, in Rio studying international relations, um, one of our uh, migration is definitely a very interesting topic. Um, but one of our um, our classmates, I was going to use common girls, um, <laughs> she is focusing specifically on female migration as well, and oh. um, she would absolutely be, love to follow your work with the rest of us. Well, I'd love to follow her work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so likewise, if, you know, and I would say this to anybody here, you know, I am interested in creating right. contacts and networks, and so this would be a good opportunity to create more yeah, at Albert Turta, we have a huge community mm -hmm. of Haitians. Yes, and um, mm -hmm. we have we have a, a first uh, Spanish Creole or Patois, whatever they call their language, dictionary out for free, mm -hmm. so that people can download download it and uh, communicate with uh, mm -hmm. the Haitians that are in wherever in Chile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so we have a. A big community working at the university. Mm. Most of them, of course, are women. Mm -hmm. And so maybe when you come to Santiago, call me and um, yes. we can go and visit them. That sounds great. Thank you. I've noticed there's so many vendors all over. And I'm just wanting to stop and ask them, where are you from? Where, you know, all these questions. So I am going to be. Um, and I don't know if many of them are Haitian, but I haven't asked, but I have noticed around Santiago, and I will be interviewing vendors in Temuco. Yes. Yes? Um, as, as you mentioned, the, um, the influx is coming into Chile. There's so many now um, people from other countries coming to Chile mm -hmm. because, as you say, of the conditions, economic conditions. There's another underlying issue that is not touched so much, but mm -hmm. I know there's a huge incident, mm. is trafficking. Mm. Trafficking of women oh, sure. in Chile. Mm. Uh, actually, the government has a unit which, which mm. monitors this. Mm -hmm. There's several on, uh, NGOs who are established in the last couple of years which are dealing with this. Uh, the incident is quite higher than we actually know. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there's always this discussion in terms of Chile's lack of policy through immigration and the effects, or the, maybe there are no effects, mm -hmm. in relation to the trafficking of, of women. Is that an area you, you're interested in, or that, uh, are you going to be looking at it? Yeah, absolutely, because that's <coughs> inclusive of, how, you know, the conditions for migration. And this is a problem in many high-income countries, yeah. you know, um, trafficking. And so, absolutely, thank you for bringing that up. Um, this is definitely, um, finding trafficked women, you know, is not easy as, as far as within a small scale study. However, I am going to be working with women's organizations and I can bet that there might be some women who, you know, might, might have immigrated or were obviously forced 
into this country, which is, you know, totally different. Thank you for bringing that up. As you me. said, it depends on the country. Exactly. It, yes. Like Peruvians, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we say that the best maids are Peruvian, which is a horrible thing to say, but it happens. And trafficking women, it's from Colombia usually. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a, a huge stigma. Yes, so most, most Antonio, uh, were you were you referring to a particular country, as Mary Jane was? No. Uh, um, or just just generally? Ge ge okay. General. So I didn't know that from Colombia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we say that about unfortunately Haiti. Mexican women Haiti. coming into Haiti the U.S. Haitian Jamaicans. And Haitian and Jamaicans. Yeah. Yeah. And we think about it uh, for a lot of Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, Eastern yeah, Europe sure. to West, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you know yes. South into the United States. You know, from from Mexico and Central mm -hmm. America into the U.S. And then there's a whole Asian thing on the West Coast. And sometimes, um, I mean, I, most of my work has been studying women cleaning and caring. And so that's why this engineer from Mexico, a recently graduated engineer, exactly, yeah. found a job caring for children in the U.S. because she couldn't exploit her qualifications and skills. Yeah, so... Um, explain a little bit more about the feminization of migration. Is that simply um, a demographic change, or is that more of a cultural change of, of migration? I just Good to question, and I think it's both. Um, previously, um, migration had been male-dominated, but on a global level, there are more, and this is the due to, like I was saying before, the burgeoning service industry, the global service industry everywhere. Um, which is um, more amenable, should I say, um, to the um, the migration of women, and because of oh, there's so many issues, economy. structural adjustment policies, um, yeah. um, which cut down social and human services of any kind in um, low-income countries, create um, various types of flows, and so. Um, Castles has written about the idea of the feminization of migration. It, Stephen Castles, in his book called um, The Age of Migration, mm -hmm. which is really since the 1990s, generally it's over the 50% mark um, on a, at a global level, but then it's, there's variation in terms of countries, states, and, and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to be reflexive in this project because I'm also an immigrant now, <laughs> so um, so it's an opportunity to. Of course, my situation is vastly different from a lot of women who've permanently come. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>